Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this, your fifth installment of the More Cans Ain't Wise podcast. As always, you're joined by me, Ben, and my co-host, James. James, how are you doing, bro? I was doing all right until you started that accent, mate. Um, how are we getting on? <laughs> I'm going to drop the accent then. I just thought it'd be nice to, you know, give the listeners something different. We're five episodes in. We want to avoid being samey. Yeah, I get that, mate. Um, I'm looking forward to tonight. I think we've got a good episode for everyone. I think so too. I think, um, yeah, we're going to, well, we've got a bit of a surprise for everybody at home again. Um, we've got another co-host. Welcome everybody. Josh Wilkinson. Hello. How are you doing, Josh? I'm good. How are you too? Oh, smashing. Actually, no, I've got to be honest. I've had a rubbish day. How are you? Well, it's been all right. I was on the hunt for beer, so. <laughs> wait, wait till I was in Two minutes in. <laughs> well, yeah, I am going to lower the tone. Basically, like um, looking for beers like we have been, I was really happy with myself because we'll go into this a bit later on, but getting hold of today's beer review beer has not been easy for us. And I was so happy with myself. I looked over at the passenger seat at the beers and uh, yeah, I reversed my car into an old lady in the, um, the uh, lady's car, I might add, in the car park. And you know that... That is an improvement, to be fair. You, you know that guilty feeling you have? Yeah. Anyway, Mia, I'm sure you're listening. I'm so sorry, and I'll ring you in the morning. So as you're... She might be able to uh, park close to the supermarkets now. Very true. Very true. No, she was of blue badge age anyway, so, um, yeah. Blue badge age, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's my day today. Um, so, Wilco, you, uh, to introduce you to the, everybody who's listening, you are the Pina Colada king in my eyes. Oh, thank you. Remember? That's, never gonna, that's how Charles remembers me, isn't it? Yeah, I saw him the other week and um, we were talking about the time that you whizzed up the blender and didn't put the lid on and we had a pina colada stain on the ceiling. <laughs> it was good though. I was serving them up in pineapples. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Um, I mean, you were king barman and now James is king barman, so you've had a bit of a role reversal. Yeah. Oh, um, I wouldn't go that far, mate. What, you're king barman? I mean, yeah, I'll take it, but there's got to be better people out there for that that uh, title. Not amongst the three of us. No, definitely <laughs> not. Really. <laughs> um, so, Wilco, we're going to ask everybody who comes on, um, what is your favourite context for a beer? Um... Could you turn it off? I keep freezing. Could you? Is your phone on the Wi-Fi? Sorry. Hello. Yeah, well, can you just start your answer whenever? Both of you guys are frozen on my screens. Well, we're both being quiet because um, we're going to cut this all out so Wilco can answer the question. Sorry about that. <laughs> I can't see anything though, that's the thing, so I can't you, tell. You've just unfrozen. Yeah, sorry, it, kept, it keeps on going unstable. Everything, is it all working now? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. James is a bit like Lego man-ish, but I can't talk. Both of you were frozen for me, and I've lost audio now. Yeah, your yours seems to be um, a bit dodgy. I can see both of you, though. Yeah, James is moving again on mine. I definitely want to keep that introduction. That's fine. We can just cut to the edit to the content context bit can't we what do you think start again no 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 it's fine we can just oh yeah as soon as we're as soon as we're ready Wilco just say his favourite context for a beer but if you start like saying like ooh and then it'll be easier to edit in yeah just lead me in okay but leave a bit of a pause between answering so I can see where it is 
Right, so. We're going to ask everybody when they come on the show, um, what is your favourite context for a beer? By that I mean, you know, like the train beer, the plane beer, the automobile beer, you know, the ones we've been discussing in previous shows. Uh, well, I thought about it, and it's got to be the barge beer. Mm. Another beer in transit. Yes. You um, like to describe the barge beer. Yeah, it usually ends up with a uh, hot sunny day. Yeah. Usually in a nice northern village. Always. Um, and it just seems to be... Rent a canal boat, dress like pirates or Vikings. Yeah. It doesn't have to be what you're drinking either. I mean, it's usually swill, but... Exactly. It, it's always been good on a barge. Shite warm lager is actually really enjoyable most of the time because of where you're drinking it. Yeah, I remember, exactly. I remember one of these trips, Wilco, where you were ploughing through the crack and run. I don't, I don't, <laughs> think, you had, I don't think you had a beer all day, to be fair. Yeah, I, um, I used to love rum a bit too much i think yeah no i tried to have some the other week and um it felt like i was just drinking fire it was awful the one i had yeah not in a good way time catches no, us all way. mate time catches us all <laughs> well the reason no. that you're on today really um is because you've got more into this than i think even we have maybe on par because you know we're here prattling on about it every week yeah. but um yeah, you're drinking along with us, and you've been on a bit of an IPA journey. Um, what would you say your beer of the lockdown is so far? Oh, it's one I had um, within the last week. Yeah. The, um, it's by Fierce, which I, um, I don't think I've had a bad one by them, and they do a lot of small batch beers as well. So yeah. it's kind of, you feel, you know, it's that fear of missing out. You want to you wanna buy them because you know they're not going <laughs> to stay around. Um, but it was a, like a addict, mate. yeah, it was a peach <laughs> Melba pale, <laughs> and um, yeah, not made. You know, like how Tiny Rebel um, put the syrups in to make yeah. it a bit more. This is brewed with actual um, peaches in a little bit of raspberry in. It says, and so it's quite subtle, but yeah, it's fantastic. It was absolutely delicious. This has a lot of hints of I heard that band before they were famous type vibes about it how it's proper music and proper yeah well, proper I, beer and they only make a few so you probably haven't had it yeah exactly so uh, <laughs> i think you part of the reason why i've got so that. back into it is because i just didn't drink for a while so um yes. I had before so yeah it's really good i've got pineapple tart by them as well that i'm, I'm saving for a hot day oh it's i've seen that can it looks nice yeah um, pineapple sour is this the evolution of a man who used to only listen to the second CD on the Now That's What I Call Albums? The first one was always the best. Oh, fair play. I stand corrected. Uh, that's a, a connoisseur speaking right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's, um, what, what, what's the best two you've had in lockdown so far? Ooh. Ooh good question. That is a, that, you know what? I've got a lot of things written down here. I've not got any responses planned to any questions because I didn't think we were going to get any. Um, James, do you know? I had the, um, the coconut cream stay puffed over the weekend. The Ooh. stay puffed tiny rebel. It was pretty delicious. So, yeah. uh, also, the Castle's um, double cream milk stout from New Zealand, Christchurch, New Zealand incredible so i'm on a bit of a dark tip at the moment so especially with the weather closing in the last couple couple of days it's been great um by contrast this is going to sound very boring but um probably the breakfast stout from red willow um which is about a mile away from my work in macclesfield so you know i, I mean you're keeping local local businesses in um in trade mate so yeah i'm putting my body at you know serious harm in serious harm keeping these breweries going single handedly. Um, another body's serious harm it sounds while you're driving today in the supermarket. <laughs> we can't laugh, it was a genuine mistake. And I, well, anyway, we'll let, the, we'll let the court decide whose fault it was. Um, so, should we go into the beer review then? Yeah, let's do it. I'm, yeah. excited for, I'm excited for this. Yeah, go on. Tell us about this beer then. So, gentlemen, Anchor Steam this week. Um, Anchor Brewery, 
this is San Francisco, California, West Coast. This is a true American classic, this beer. So the name Steam. Yeah. Um, this 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 beer is in this four uh, variations has been brewed over a hundred years, eighteen ninety six. This exact beer has been bottled like this for nearly fifty years. So it's oh called, it's called Steam. Late eighteen uh, nineties. Um, refrigeration was a real um, luxury. So to get round that, the new um, the brewers used a lager yeast because it could brew at a higher temperature because they didn't have the ice to cool it down. And they yeah. used shallow brewing tanks. So when the um, the warm brew hit the like foggy San Francisco air, created a lot of steam. So that style of beer was called a steam beer. I mean, now, just Anchor is allowed to call it a steam because they're like the one. This is like the traditional steam beer of uh, the West Coast. Uh. So, yeah, so this is... This is a very old, very traditional, very, um, people also call it a Californian common beer. So it's a easy accessible lager yeast brewed at a slightly higher temperature, most very traditional way of brewing it. So taste wise, it's super, super easy drinking. Um, very, very malty. Yeah. Medium yeah. body. You'll see it when you pour it. It's red in color. Um, I really like it because just the balance between malt and hop. So you'll get that initial malt when you taste it, like caramelly, biscuity taste, and then it finishes in that hop. I just think it's a super easy drinking beer. And I thought we've done quite a lot of beers in the UK, so I thought this would be a fantastic way to kind of show. Before we go East Coast, I thought West Coast and um, show you one of the one of the all time great American beers. This. That's amazing because I mean yes. it. It looks pretty unassuming. Um, it's difficult to get your hands on in this country, I would say. Um, never heard of it before, and never seen it on draft. So, it's, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's it's a weird one, especially the West Coast stuff. I think that'll change over the next few years, but you very rarely see anything West Coast based on keg in this country it's just simply because it has to travel so far yeah so you've got, so you've got flash in um san diego for example makes some of the best sours and some of the best ipas in the world but you just can't you can't get their beers because it's got to travel like days by boat uh, by truck or uh, yeah. lorry to get to the east coast and then days by ship to get over here so Nearly all the American beers that you'll get in the UK are from Maine, Vermont, New England area, just because it's so close in comparison. Yeah. What are we thinking about the taste, Wilco? I like it. It's, um, I think because uh, the past couple of weeks I've just been drinking IPAs or stouts. Yeah. Um, it just, it, the first thing I said to you is it, it, it's, it's just lager, but then once you've get a few tastes of it it's actually really nice it's somewhere it it's got more body like you said james than just a normal lager i think i think it's somewhere between almost a lager and a amber ale yeah i would i would totally agree with that mate i think because it used lager yeast and the americans will call this a lager so similar I mean, to like similar to like a sam adams from um the, the east coast yeah. the americans will call this a lager because it uses lager yeast but what we've come accustomed to in this country is the German East European version of the lager, which then becomes our versions of lager, which are very different, very lighter in appearance. Yeah. Like, brewed differently. Are you sure, Wilco, you weren't just feeling guilty about hearing the long history of this this highly no, acclaimed beer? Yeah. It tastes like lager, mate. I mean, uh... I poured it out and it's it's gone down, like James says, it's very easy. It's gone. It is, it is a very... Down. Very easy to drink, isn't it? I could imagine just getting through quite a few of them without really thinking about it and not, you know, getting yeah, steamy. Either it's quite, it's quite, it's not as carbonated as some. Mm. I mean, it is like when we talk about a classic beer, it is almost like a classic car in that sense. I mean, you've got to remember that this beer has been made for in certain guises for 120 years and like in this form, nearly 50 years. Which is unbelievable, really. Yeah, 
Yeah. So it's never going to blow you away in terms of in terms of huge out there hoppiness, which is in, in fashion now, or fruitiness, simply because that wasn't the style. And they, yeah. brewed, with, and they brewed with what they had and what atmospherics they had to deal with and access to cooling, like I said. So it is, it is, an, Amer- it is an American classic. I mean... I, I love it particularly. I mean, I've been I have been over to Anchor, been to the brewery. Ah, okay. And you do get drawn into that, like like you guys are saying that that story of it. That yeah, I prefer it because of the story, definitely. Yeah. Um, to tighten up our proceedings um, and moving forward, how we're going to be rating all these beers, I've come up with some criteria. Feel free to add any, but. I think we should rate all future beers on sessionability, affordability, attainability, and taste. I think they're the big boys for me. Yeah, I think I think that's definitely. So, can I ask you guys for a sessionability out of ten? Oh, eight, eight and a half, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm at an eight there as well. I'd agree with that. I'm going for nine, so makes it easier to um, get an average. Um, affordability, that's me. So, so we should probably talk about supermarkets and stuff, shouldn't we? So, yeah. I mean, to let you guys into it, like I told Josh and Ben at the beginning of the week that we were doing this, and I just assumed that all one <laughs> that everyone had access to an Asda in the UK. And two, that all Asdas would sell it. <laughs> I've, been, I've been to three Asdas today and none of them had it. <laughs> That's I, awful. I got the last bottle on the shelf and it was halfway back. I was stood for about five, ten minutes. And yeah. I was going through each label looking for it. Because I, as well, I wasn't too familiar what the bottle looked like either. So it's not one of them things you can just... You know when they lo- launch like 4G or whatever or 5G and then they show all these like areas that are, that have it and then there's these little cross sections that aren't really London, Birmingham or like, yeah. you know, aren't near a major town or city. Well, I reckon I'm in a dark spot for Asda's round here. <laughs> this particular part of Cheshire is not, um, it's not got a lot of Asda's around. So oh, fifth- you, you, you've never sounded more middle class there, mate. Yeah. 50 my minute part, round trip. My part of Cheshire, nowhere near Asda's. <laughs> well, uh, I've got to be honest, it was awful in Asda's. It was very busy. There was nobody making sure who went in, who went out. Um, but they had the beer, so I can't complain. Um, Afford, so, affordability was saying, well. So I, um, I ended up shout out to Steve at um, Al Star Bar in Salt Air. Managed, well, always has bottles and bottles and bottles of this. So I'm, I paid two pound fifty for this bottle today. Al Star Bar in Saltaire, everybody. We'll go. Make, we'll make a pilgrimage there as soon as we can. Um, so two pound fifty, I think it's it's excellent value for for that. It's an eight for me on the affordability. Okay, eight. Wow, how much cheaper? Okay, fair. Yep. Yeah. Wilco. Uh, I'd say about seven. I think for what James has said as well with. You know, with it being quite niche, John, on, on getting it across as well, and for what for actually what it is for a for a good lager, it's not that bad. I think I paid two pounds. Yeah. Okay. Fair. That's good. That's good. And, and right. We we have to remember as well for that it is it, it is made in San Francisco and imported. Yeah. It's not. Oh <laughs> uh, whoa whoa! It's not don't brutal. don't bring common sense to the table. <laughs> it's not brewed under license, so it is it is imported. So should brew it round here if they're asked. Right, attainability. I think attainability was pretty poor because there's no Asda's round here, and you went to three Asda's that didn't have it. Um, it's a, it's a three for me for this. I was fortunate, I, fortunate enough to know somebody that had it. But. I asked our artisan bottle shops, and two of them, well, because I was like, "Hi, have you got any Anchor Steam?" and they were like, "What on earth are you asking here, Anchor Steam?" Anchor Steam? Uh, oh, oh, right, by an- right, no, we don't Anchor Steam. But yeah, so Wilco, attainability, I'm giving it a big fat two. What are you getting? What are you going? I'll give it a five just because I've only got one as to name me and it was in there. And finally, taste, right? Without any explanation, boys, out of 10. 8.5 for me. Wilco? Uh, 
7.5 for me. 7.5, and I'm giving it uh, I'm going to give it a 7. Feeling a bit harsh. Right, I'm, so... I'm, fi- I'm thinking we should add um, branding onto this, I think. Branding, right, okay, so how aware of it we are. Yes. So look, and the look of it. And the look of it. Right, okay, bloody hell. Well, um, I mean, we've not exactly sung its praises on the brand in front, but go on. Let's have a, let's have a number each. Um, it's it's going to be, it, well, it's a classic for me, but I understand probably the modern market, it doesn't look particularly great, but it is a classic. I'm going for a seven for branding. Yep. Josh? <laughs> a one. <laughs> and then I'm going to go... For, I'm going to give it a, a three because, you know what, why not? Right, so... And, and hopefully that should give us a score out of 50. So I'm going to I'm going to tot all those up later and then we'll do a bit of a, 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 a release of what it is, you know. Um, um, and we will go back re- retrospectively and do all the others to give you an idea. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. And then everybody, you know, they're crying out for top quality content, James. And there's only, you know... There's only so much we can do. We need to make more. Exactly. Exactly. So, speaking of which, have you got a worst purchase for us? Because the top three this week, we're doing our top three worst purchases, which could go down a number of avenues. Um, James, do you want to kick us off? So I've gone with two personal and one general. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start out quite um, themed. Um, during this lockdown or whatever. At the beginning of this year and the end of last year, um, I purchased um, flights and accommodation for three separate stag dues during April and May. <laughs> Not ideal purchases, it has to be said. Who did you book with? Are, are you are you British Airways getting your money back or are you Ryanair getting your money back when the... Uh, well, never. <laughs> so, big shout out to... Jet to and to British Airways and Ch- Chili Sauce Stag Do Company <laughs> for sorting out our refunds for um, Prague and Warsaw. Um, yeah. Ryanair can go suck a bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I promised myself I wasn't going to laugh in the mic this week and I've just ruined it. Suck a bag of dicks. Um, yeah, not a big fan. And also, like, <laughs> When you get the money back, it's great, but it's like this money should be going on watching, watching one of your mates um, get destroyed by a Eastern European stripper. Or, <laughs> this is this is money for um, a bottomless brunch on a boat down the Danube or whatever. So yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I know, I know how you feel. That yeah. So. I, re- I today found out that I'm going to be able to go to the Euros again next year, having booked the flights and all that. They, they, they'll get refunded when they get refunded, but it doesn't clash with weddings and what... Oh, actually, James and Charlotte, it doesn't clash with your wedding. So don't worry, I'll definitely be there now. Yeah, that's a bit, it's been a bit of a killer, the Euros, because we're supposed to be going to the final. This you, year. Had, you had tickets to the final. Of, well, you still do. I think the signal's bad. I think I've just yeah, lost yeah, we, everyone. Year, oh, James. Still a James, we lost. Oh, my un- I'm unstable. Hello, I'm here. You both. I've got you now. I've got you both now. Right, James. Do we start about this, the finals still this year? So, yeah, I took it to the final, which is a bit gutting, but it's still going on next year which is which is fine but it's still just a bit of a buzz killer in for this year yeah yeah but like you know at least at least it's going ahead you know yeah, unless put, unless china and india have this world war that they're planning i didn't i didn't put uh, the european uh, t- uh the european football tickets in there because one i didn't pay for them so not really my purchase and two it's happening next year so yeah fair play um right then i'll um I've got one uh, bad purchase. It's just, um, it's one of those things where, you know, you feel dead clever when you buy it and then you find out that you're actually thick and life's meaningless and you should probably just never try to improve your life. I was like, in the, I watched those um, adverts, you know, Alperson, um, 
the German engineering for your hair shampoo. Oh, the yeah. caffeine. Yeah, it's like, it's like German engineering for your hair. And then the sound of some race cars. You're like, yeah, come on, vroom, vroom, I want this. And it's like caffeine shampoo. What better boost in the morning? You know, but if you're knackered from the night before, just wash your hair with a bit of caffeine. Don't need a coffee because I don't drink hot drinks. Just wash my hair with <laughs> Alpacid. So I went into work a few days later and I was like, fucking hell, lad, you need to try this Alpacin shampoo. It's great. I felt really awake every morning. He's like, yeah, mate, that's for hair loss. That's like if you need to thicken your hair, uh, which you don't. So, you know. Is it really? I, mean, yeah. I, would, have fall- I would have fallen for that because... It I sounds like it. it. Alpacin shampoo. It's like, yeah, get up in the morning. <laughs> get up and go. <laughs> so yeah that's one of my worst purchases just because the egg on my face and uh well my, my hair is really thick now and during lockdown i look like a lego man which thanks to helen helen for pointing that out uh and james the, you know yeah, all I was the, say that was that was pretty tough i looked like i was stealing somebody's joke yeah it was helen, minutes helen, later helen, yeah I looked, <laughs> I looked on twitter and it was like 17 minutes previously i was like oh my god it just looks like i'm a thief it looks like i'm just intellectual property has just been stolen right now you had to you had to acknowledge it didn't you like oh yeah i actually said this on a different platform like i didn't actually just see it and uh yeah yeah I josh it'll be funny post <laughs> on my own podcast page <laughs> it, so. well i thought it'd be funny to post on the podcast page today and i got absolutely rinsed i'll never do it again um josh have you got a, a terrible purchase that you've made yeah so I don't usually buy stuff without thinking it through, but um, mine is, I bought a leather jacket one, (laughs) a brown, (laughs) because um, I'd seen uh, Michael Fassbender in um, X-Men First Class, and I thought, yeah, that looks good. I look like Michael Fassbender if I put on that jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ordered it. it. Yeah, it came. I tried it on. I took it straight off. (laughs) <laughs> straight back. No one. I didn't even do the. Do you think this looks all right on me? Do you? I wish she had. I really wish she had. I um, uh, yeah. Stupid. Twenty-one. Big lanky fella. I look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I look cool. So, yeah, you know, awful. you know when you see boxer shorts in Sports Direct, and you see that yeah. like incredibly jacked guy wearing briefs. Do you buy them expecting to look like him? What do you mean? Yeah. Course. <laughs> <laughs> right, James, you got a number two for us. I have. Um, Fernando Torres to Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> you caught us by surprise. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So, um, is this a personal one? Were you involved in the transaction? I wasn't involved in the transaction. Um, I do have to say there is a bit of mitigation for the Gary Neville orgasm (laughs) at Barcelona. But for me, 50 million quid is a lot of money to not score any goals. Yeah, he he was past it then. Yeah. I mean... um, Go on, Sorry, go on. After you, mate. Uh, uh, I was listening to the Jamie Carragher podcast um, a couple of months ago. And he was on about the Fernando Torres deal and he said, we couldn't believe that offer. And he was like, I was telling everyone at the club just to take it. Really? He knew, yeah, he, he knew that he was past it. He was shot. Bloody hell. Nobody else knew. I thought he was like, because I mean, he used to always turn it on against United. So I thought he was the best footballer in the world for a little bit. And then he went to Chelsea and was, oh, the best footballer in the world, not the worst. But yeah. It was a pretty, st- uh, pretty sharp uh, decline, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> a Ben Blunt level of decline. Um, <laughs> Josh, have you got a second, mate? Uh, yeah, the second one is um, I bought fish in a jar once. What's so, a fish in a jar? So fish in a jar is on Joe Lindsay's stag do. We found this really nice bar in the middle of the day for some lunch. Mm. Some and I ordered um, what I thought I was, you know, a light snack just to coax me out of my hangover. Yeah. And it was like, um, it was like it said smoked mackerel or something, but yeah. with a bit of salad. And I just thought, that's light. It'll sort me out. 
and it came and it was like it wasn't smoked it was like poached fish in a jam jar mm. leaves scattered over it it was the hardest thing to eat because oh, well, it was in a jam jar well, okay, i've got to stop you there i'm just thank the lord when you said fish in the jar i imagine you've gone to the local like gala and seen <laughs> seen a carny and just got like literally a goldfish in a in a jam take jar. all but, my money but I'm james hungry. james these are both preferable to actual jam in a jar i'm guessing for you the hater of jam as it turns oh, out I, four or five people have messaged me in fact somebody somebody walked up to me in the street in bradford and said <laughs> how do you not like jam i got a text saying how does he not like jam the best condiment charlotte <laughs> Charlotte, if you're listening, um, I am very sorry, but one, jam, not a condiment. Two, yeah. jam, horrendous. <laughs> but if you're eating smoked, if you're hoping for smoked mackerel on a hangover, you you, you deserve whatever you get. Yeah, whatever no. is being served to you. I, I'm the sorry abuse to, I've got I'm, as well. Yeah, I'm sorry to team up on you, Will Wilco, but 100%. <laughs> if, you're, if you're ordering a smoked, oily fish... <laughs> in, in continent, oh, where was it? Um, Estonia. Yeah, uh, it, it was either Slovakia or Slovenia. Yeah, or Lithuania. That, yeah, I'm sorry. Eastern I mean, Europe. There we go. Eastern European fish. The stag, the stag do staples are. Were you like, in a landlocked country? <laughs> no. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> The stag do staples have got to be burger and chips from an Irish bar. Lager. Yeah, exactly. Just, just don't touch anything else. Well, we went, we went to an Irish bar and drank it out of Guinness. Uh, uh, that's that is that's more up, like it. It's not a very good up Irish up culture. Bar. I like <laughs> soaking up the mackerel oil. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, um, I read it instantly. So, oh, I'm not surprised. I've right. My second one. Um, I bought tickets to a gig for me and a girl to go to, and the girl I was pretty aware was going off me at this point. So I thought I needed to make a big gesture to pull things back around, and so I bought tickets to go and see Jose Gonzalez, and then she broke up with me. So um, I decided, you know what? I'm not one. I'm not going to waste this. I'll just go with my mate. I'll go with my housemate, Mike. So Mike and I, as mates, went to go and watch Jose Gonzalez in Manchester. You know Jose Gonzalez. Is he the guy from the TV advert with all this, the balls? The Sony Bravia advert where all the yeah. balls are rolling down the hill. That's him. That's him. Um, was, was this, a, was this what, a, like a sit-down concert or like a gig? It was a gig where everybody was stood up but cuddling each other, and Mike and I weren't. <laughs> I mean, he's not into that sort of thing whatsoever. Um, yeah. Oh, extra points, by the way, for both of you, if you can guess where Jose Gonzalez is from. What nationality is? Ooh. England. No. Right, so you want us to say Spain. And then you're thinking maybe Portugal. But then you go Spanish-speaking, Colombia. No, it, 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 he's Swedish. Oh, rubbish. See, See, I thought that's, that's why I said England. I thought you were trying to trick us. Well, I am trying to trick you, but I mean... Sweet Jose Gonzalez. Anyway, um, Mike didn't thank me for taking him to that gig. So I said, come on, mate, we'll go to another gig, right? And this time I bought tickets for the two of us. He's not really a music fan. Um, and we went to go and see Slipknot and he hated that just as much. <laughs> I mean, again, I've got no sympathy for you. I loved it. And admitted, one extreme to the other, isn't it? Yeah, mm. a, a non-music fan who's your friend. Oh, you to two separate gigs. <laughs> like... Oh, you don't like Jose Gonzalez? I know what you probably like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's that big a Venn diagram of like um, Slipknot fans and Jose Gonzalez fans. I just imagine it's you in that little bit in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> me, me on my own. Um, right, James, what's your number one worst right. purchase? Right, so this is this is for the aftermath of this. Let me take you to the Hayworth Arms. <laughs> we were there last week. I was going to say, it keeps coming up. Old Boys, 2016. Ooh. May. Burnley versus Charlton. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Burnley win the, uh, the EFL Championship for the first time in my lifetime. 
promoted to the Premier League. We've yeah. got a lot, of, a lot of beers the night before. In in readiness for them winning. Yeah, the game kicks off at half twelve. Done done by half two. At half past two, for whatever reason, stood on the bar whilst a hundred and forty Jaeger bombs are ordered. <laughs> <laughs> how much like, is that? How much I mean, is that? <laughs> I mean, not all me in Italy it was split about five, six, seven ways. I can't even remember. Um, yeah. Locals getting involved. Unreal. Teaching people songs. Two went times, to, two times. Went to the gardeners after another pub in Hull. Needless to say, bed for about five o'clock, a few hours <laughs> sleep. <laughs> May, uh, went out for a couple of hours in the evening. Thought, oh, I'll just put myself to bed. The next three or four days of that hangover <laughs> were about the worst, <laughs> worst feeling in my life. But so... Not the booze, more the all of the sugar in the world in those Jager bombs. Oh yeah, and I mean all the caffeine as well. That you you've got heart palpitations. The alcohol's slowing your heart down. The Red Bull's speeding it up, you know. And then the sugar's just just ruining your head. But yeah, it was it was a good, it was a good laugh though. I'd say it was worth it, but then I didn't pay for any of the hundred and forty Jager bombs, so. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that where, when when you were at the gardeners as well, you um, found that other Burnley fan who was the really old guy? Oh, probably. You, you probably can't remember <laughs> that. You were singing a two times song, and you, you were like, Burnley have won. And he was like, Yeah, I know. I'm here for a funeral or something. And oh, yeah, both started he, was there. he was there for a wake. Yeah, proper old boy. Yeah. Wow. Well, that made his day better anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. Okay, so the third one paints me out probably in the worst light. Out of no, it can't be worse than... The, no, the leather jacket and the smoked fish, I'm sorry. You, it doesn't get worse than that. Okay, so... Unless um, you purchased a... a no. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you say first. No, so I'm trying to think when it was. Um, February... Oh, 2012, 2013. Valentine's Back month. month. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'd realised I didn't want to be in a relationship anymore, but didn't want to break up before the 14th because... You're a romantic. I didn't want to be an arsehole. Um, the problem with that was um, said girlfriend... Uh, because we couldn't see each other on Valentine's Day, then came through to my house. Um, so we went out for an evening meal, but I also bought her a big bunch of flowers as well. Knowing you were going to split up with her? The next day. <laughs> Mate. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Still, it's not worse it than the fish. It just wasn't very good. So she, um, <laughs> she posted a photo online as well saying, I've got the best boyfriend ever. <laughs> And a photo of the flowers. And then, like, two days later, he was just no longer in a relationship. Oh, man. That... I thought I was doing the right thing by waiting till after. But, but I probably made it worse by going out for a meal and buying the flowers. And There was no good time to get fired. There's no good time to get dumped. Although it always no. seems like the worst time. It's just life runs its course sometimes. However... Ordering that fish and wearing that jacket. <laughs> Inexcusable. Oh, I didn't say I was wearing the jacket at the time. It's <laughs> fair she didn't leave you then. You, start, you started that sentence then, Ben. I thought you were going to go full agony, Ant. I was going to be like, oh, yeah. Ben's, Ben's emotionally sound for, sound for Will come here. It's class, but then bang. Fish, well, bang, Jay. And the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, see how you feel about this one. This is the worst purchase I've ever made in my life. And this is the reason that I thought we should do this this week. Um, when I was a bit, a lot heftier, um, I was trying to shift some weight. And how do all fat people try and shift weight when they're no good at it? They buy protein powder and don't do any exercise. <laughs> so I bought myself some protein powder. I started going to the gym. No cardio because, you know, I don't want to get like proper skinny. I just want to be bulky and that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I finished a whole tub of that stuff. Um, and I was like, I like that, that. But 
I tried to buy some more and um, they weren't selling it in Aldi or something like that. And so I go online to my protein or something or other. And I'm like, right, come on, end game. What do we want? Fat wallet, skinny body. We want one that makes us lose weight. And also, you know, it doesn't cost too much. So I bought this one that was a proper weight loss protein powder. Um, and it said on the side when I got it, it only had a little scoop, like, I don't know, like a thimble type thing, tiny, and then add loads of water. I'm thinking, this is nowhere near the consistency of the chocolate flavored one that I was you know, drinking before. And it's not a very good gateway, is it, to losing weight drinking chocolate smoothies. But nonetheless, that's what I was doing. And so rather than put the thimble in, I just got the, uh, the scoop from the last one and put about three <laughs> massive thingies in because, you know, more protein, more weight loss Why protein, not? more weight loss, more muscles. Yeah. This sounds so obvious, right? Because now I look back and I know why this was all happening. But basically I started doing, taking this stuff and I got intense headaches that meant that I couldn't sleep, but then I had a really bad stomach, which meant that I couldn't like go and do any exercise. And so it was a bit like a mental arm wrestle, you know, do I run out, run and shit myself or stay up all night? And so having stayed up all night a few nights, I just thought, right, the worst you can do is shit yourself. So I went for a run and uh, well, I was just horrendously unfit. So, you know, short little jog around the block and then came back home. Job well done. I think I'll go, to, go you know, I think I'll uh, go to sleep. Didn't sleep that night. So I thought, right, I'm going to go for a proper long run here. And uh, well, no, no well, I'm not even going to go into detail, but I was faced with a decision. I either run home and probably make it but can't clench or walk and clench. And in the end, I got to a midway point, ran into a pub, pooed my pants, threw them in the bin and, uh, ran and walked home. But um, anyway, got back and I thought, there's got to be something going on. I need to work out, you know, what it is that's making me feel this way. And the protein powder that I bought, it was, um, it was, it was infused with like a lot of green tea extract, which helps you lose weight. It's also full of like, a lot of things that you don't want to be poisoned by, which give you diarrhea and headaches. <laughs> <laughs> and so in trying to lose weight, I suppose I did in a way, but I also couldn't go in my local ever again. So I think that's the worst purchase. I think that's worse than any jacket. Come in, wearing a jacket is much better than not wearing your boxes. <laughs> That's a very elaborate story for why you're barred from your local. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. I've moved, moved many times since then because of this. Right, boys, I've got a little plan for um, the next little segment. Do you remember this sound? James, you'll be familiar. This sound is what we do before we play a game. And you guys are going to be <laughs> head triggered to a game of verbal tennis which is probably the easiest podcast game in the world, but I hadn't thought to do it until right now. So what we're going to do is uh, you guys are going to take it in turns and I'm going to officiate. Um, you guys can stick your hands up if you think that the other person's wrong. If nobody sticks their hands up and I, if I ignore your hands, that means that it's been ignored. I, I'm allowing it. Um, you go back and forth saying one of a category until you know the other person can't say one. And no blame in the internet connections because they've been all right so far. Um, I'll start us off. We're going to go, Wilco, you're going to kick us off. And we're going to say pubs with animals in the name. Go. The white lion. The red lion. The blue badger. Ooh, the horse and hounds. Uh, the fox in. These pauses are quite generous, boys. Need the to click owl. it. The owl. The dog. The dog and gun. <laughs> the duck pond. Um, oh. Oh, I've lost Three, it. Uh, two, uh, one. Oh, uh, my. Uh, yeah. Oh. Are you going to say the elephant in castle? castle. That is, that's, that's, that's wild. <laughs> Why did your mind go to elephant first of all the animals that can be pubs? You're just gonna go big to small, mate. You know. <laughs> so you'd gone through like the mice and men. That sounds the, weird. Um, mice, and, mice and men. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Okay. Um, that worked. I'd say averagely well. 
Should we go for um we're gonna go for another one. Now I've written a beer here that you can't say, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is. And if anyone says the danger beer, then you know, you lose. So lagers. Well uh, James start us off. Stella Artois. Budweiser. Foster's. Bud Light. No, no, nah, James, cancel the game. <laughs> Don't you dare say that on our show. <laughs> Horrible beer. <laughs> right. Should we um I mean that went we might never do that game again. It went pretty averagely, didn't it? It went averagely. You know what? We're not even looking to fill time this week. We're not vamping, so we'll move on to um our brewery of the week. Um yeah, right right, fellas. We've gone um salt brewery this week. Yes. For a couple of reasons. Um, so Salt Brewery, very, very young, because it's 2018. Yeah. Part of, part of the Osset family. So if you've ever had beer from Osset, Rat, Riverhead, Fernandez, they're all under the same umbrella co- company. Um, um, we've picked this one just in terms of it's from my home village. The tap rooms at the old tram shed in Saltaire. Uh, we're hoping that we mentioned before on, on this podcast that we're doing a charity walk next May. So we're hoping that on the 29th of May, uh, which is Saturday, 2021, we'll have an event on that Salt, salt Brewery, the tap room. Um, and to all of the listeners, all 15 of you, you can come along. Definitely. Yeah, the more the merrier. Everybody come down. Um, it's... So, as I say, it's, it's quite young. I've picked some beers out for you guys to try. So, we got the, the iCat, I believe both of you guys have got. Yeah, after yeah. last week, I mean, I said in no uncertain terms that I don't want to drink any surprisingly strong beers. And then I have a few sips of this, and the 6% is actually an 8%. And it's a it big can. Like it, was it? No, it's, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. It hides the, uh, the alcohol really nicely. So Love it. So for a bit of balance in terms of all of the products, all of all of the beers are named after the textile industry because obviously it's a tighter salt salt air. Um, so I've got a Jute, the Session IPA, which is like the house beer at the tap room. Yeah, yeah, also, really nice. I've also got a Huckerback as well, which is the uh, New England IPA. Uh, you guys are on the double IPA, so I just thought I'd do a little bit of a uh, shout out for all their beers. Um, one of the other reasons we're doing this is we're hopefully going to get Adam on from Saltaire next week. Saltaire being the older of the two breweries in the village, we thought we'd do a bit of balance, a bit of uh, compare and contrast between the yeah. two styles. Um, so this one first is um, the, the younger brewery trying to brew um, a little, uh, in a little bit more of a modern style, but I think they make some delicious beers. Uh, for me, the jute and the iCat that you guys have got are absolutely delicious. This iCat is awesome, but um, in what in what scenario do you drink an eight percent beer? So my housemate Sam actually works at Salt. Okay. He has, he has it as his uh, nightcap, his um, go to go to end of the night beer. I mean, this would be my end of the night beer whenever I drank it because I wouldn't have any choice in the matter. Yeah, <laughs> especially um, we're talking about availability and accessibility. Um, I think Tesco do this at three pound a can for the four forty, yeah. which is ludicrous. Eight percent four forty bill, three pound a can. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, what do you guys reckon to them? I am. Um, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Like, um, so we've got our um, beer fifty two orders that come on a on a monthly basis. So we got this alpaca, which I've not tried yet. But I went on a bit of a mission on Sunday, which I've already spoken about. Drank a load of the salt beers. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. Just this, this um, iCat is absolutely delicious. Really refreshing. My favourite yeah. of the lot by, by a long way. No, yeah, I really like it. It, it, it tastes like a, a session IPA almost, I think. With You, you can't tell. It's um, really nice. I, the alpaca is really nice as well. I got that in my beer 52 this month. Yeah, yeah, that's the um, one is really good and i also based on a little crossover with your previous podcast there's a salt magic um magic rock combo um oh yeah 
oh three pounder can for a four forty mil. Um, a New England IPA. I haven't had it yet, but it sounds nice. So I saw that today. Oh, I yeah, got it. So. <laughs> And if you check out our Instagram, I'll be doing a review of the hooker back as our can of the day this week as well. So mm. oh, awesome. we love it. So I mean, we've also when we're talking about getting breweries on, we've also got Storm Brewery coming on um, in later weeks, which would be which would be really good. There, the Macclesfield based brewery we were talking about um, last week. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not really a lot of rating to go on, is there? In the spotlight, we're just talking about go to if you are in the supermarket. By salt. Yeah, really nice. And if you're in the if you're in the salt air area, and um, well, hopefully join us in May. But if you are in the salt air area and you know me, not if you don't know me, <laughs> give me a ring. And uh, also, and also check out the tap room because it's fantastic. Oh, can't beat a brewery the tap room. He says, having never been to a brewery's tap room. Oh no, tell a lie, James. Where's the one we went to? Is that salt air? Yeah, we, yeah, you've been in this. You've been in that in the building we're talking about. Happy days, right? <laughs> I have been to one. <laughs> Mad that um, it's literally like five minutes between the two breweries, isn't it? As well, between Salt and Saltaire. Yes, yeah, so, so, yeah, it's about a mile. Salt, yeah. Saltaire, Saltaire's in Chipley, actually, just outside. But yeah, um, it's like Dundee and Dundee United football grounds. You would spit at one from the other. If which, you're that type of person. which they quite regularly do, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, right, okay. Well, should we play a different game? I just want to see how it goes. Yeah, that would upset me. All right, so we're going to name common beers in a circle. Um, so it's going to be me, Wilco, James, me, Wilco, James. Okay. Does it, I don't know how I, how it looks on the uh, on the screen that you're looking at. I'm going to generate a random letter, and I'll show it to you guys. And then it's, it's beers beginning with that letter. And I've not revised. I don't know how you could revise, but, well, I did try. But, you know, it could be any letter. So here we go. Right. Just, just to let you know, Ben, I can't see the screen. No, neither could I. <laughs> yeah, I know. I realise that. So what we're we'll going to do, what we'll pretend. Okay, here we go. Generate random letter. It's M. So go on. Uh, I'll start us off. So me, Wilco, Brunskill. And I'm going to go for Moretti. Is it beer and Moretti? I think we'll, we'll let you have Moretti. We'll go. I haven't got a clue. James Brown. Eh. Yeah. You know what? It's really, it's really hard, isn't it? <laughs> if you'd said C, that might have been a B. <laughs> Carlsberg, Carling. James? You could have got Mitchell of Ultra. Right. Gonna oh. do, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna delete all of this out of the. Uh, out this of the is thing. where James just puts us to shame. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't very inclusive, was it? Just do another one. Do it. Do another letter, and then. Oh, edit this yes, part. I like it. Okay, right. So. Okay, so the random letter is G. So we're going with me to start, then Wilco, then James. So, Grolsch. <laughs> that was the one I was. <laughs> <laughs> Wilco gave us the big um, thumbs up. Got oh, this. Goose, Goose IPA. Oh, my favourite. Goose three one two. Um, Goose, Goose. They have a stout. Oh, Goose Island Imperial Stout. Is that a thing? Do they have an Imperial Stout that's imported? Oh, don't do this with your technicalities. They have a stout which looks like it's in a champagne bottle. I've heard it's the best. Okay. Grimbergen. I'm all out. <laughs> I think I think both of mine were wrong, so we'll just we'll just cut this all out. Right, okay, yeah. so here we go. I'll do another segue then. So, boys, even though we're recording on Thursday, so we haven't seen Man United absolutely smash Spurs on Friday, um, the Premier League is back. We're happy, right? Yeah. We're happy with what we've yes. seen? Shout out to David Luiz. <laughs> he, he, very, he was number four on my top uh, worst purchases. Ah. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I couldn't remember whether he was bought or not. I feel sorry for him, obviously, but... 
Yeah, he did have to come out. At, like, because before the game, they asked Arteta, they were like, you know, why is David Luiz not in the team? And he said, um, David Luiz isn't in the team because he's not up to it. And then because of injuries, they brought him on pretty early. Yeah. Um, he came on, gave the ball away, which put Raheem th- Sterling through on goal, scored a goal. You know, that's, that's bad enough. Then you've got to sort of, you know, make amends for that. And he, um, he got sent off, didn't he, before half time by uh, pulling Mares down in the box, which meant penalty 2 0. Good night, God bless. And that was, his, that was his early bath as well. Well, I mean, it's, it's great news to my lot, isn't it? Like, um, what on earth do your lot have to do with this? <laughs> um, so, City have got, um, City have had a warm up against Arsenal 1 3 0. God only knows how many goals City are going to score. And they, re- they rested Aguero for that one because they knew that was going to be the easy one before the Burnley game. Yeah. And I'm not even joking. It's Burnley great. didn't lose to Brentford 3 <laughs> 2. <laughs> oh, God, Arsenal did, didn't they? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the warm up. Yeah, but they made the mistake, didn't they? And they were like, oh, my apologies, we've lost 3 <laughs> 2. That was the announcement. Yeah. I'm glad it's back. I think the first game was a bit underwhelming, apart from the controversy. But um, yeah, especially when you especially when you backed three point five total goals and over. That was <laughs> <laughs> for it to yeah. finish nil nil was a bit harrowing. It was like watching straight white porn. It was like, yeah, it's. I suppose it is what it is, but it's not. It's not exciting, is it? I think I um, I said to you as well because <laughs> no one had the names on the shirts. Oh yeah, I can't watch Aston Villa versus Sheffield United and know who people are because no, you know, don't. you know who Jack Grealish is because he's the only decent fo- footballer at Villa. No, and that's not how you know. He's, yeah, he's the one who has a plait on his head, a shave in the sides, and then a fade. Like, what what haircut would you like today, Jack? I'll have um, I'll have all of them actually. Could I have top a bit shelf, of <laughs> top shelf left to right? Pint of top shelf, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, I've just alluded to the fact we're recording on a Thursday because we've all got these um, prior commitments. So uh, yeah, it's gonna it's an interesting one. We've only had a couple of days between episodes, hence the struggle to get the beers. But such is our commitment to the cause. And for people listening on Sunday, happy Father's Day to everyone. Uh, oh yes, James, James and I are visiting our illegitimate children today. Um, I hope you all are too. Um, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Wilco, happy Father's Day, mate. Oh, thank you. Father to, two, to uh, two lovely Newsley. dogs. Yeah, I have got two lovely dogs, but um, happy Father's Day to Jimmy Newsley. New father again. Oh, yeah, new father. Congratulations. Is it a new so, father if you've already got a kid? I, I thought the novelty wore off. Um, Don't know. Yeah, we'll just, <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll go with ambivalence and it'll be fine. Yeah, he's still lifting weights and drilling cans, so fair play to him. Lifting weights and drilling cans, that's two things I'm rubbish at. How did you say his second name? Yeah, I want to take issue with this as well. This is worse than the mackerel or the leather jacket. Newsly? It's not a breakfast cereal. It's not a breakfast cereal. How do you say it? I've never said it out loud. I just go with Jimmy the French. Yeah, if you... If you have a friend who's of another nationality, that's that tends to be how it goes. He's the only person in my phone book that isn't first name and surname. Wait, James, 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 is Wilco just, is he just the least ignorant out of us? Because we'll get Jimmy on, we'll ask, we'll get, we'll get. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, what would he come across as very xenophobic? He's French, it doesn't matter. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. Right then, shall we scooch over to the next portion of the show? From France to Ireland. Oh, I. Ooh. So, um, it's the three-way be... Guinness game. All-time standings: James two, Ben two, others zero. Yeah, that's a very important stat. The others. Others. Toby disgraced himself when he came on. Hi, Toby. To- well, Toby didn't disgrace himself. He promised the world and then delivered a sip. But it was apparently good beer, and you said it was your favourite beer of lockdown, so there might be some weight to that argument. Yeah, oh, yeah, I totally, I totally forgot. I just remembered he didn't win. But now I remember he was actually drinking Stay Puffed um, Marshmallow Porter, wasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> so we can, we can allow it, I reckon. We can allow it, yeah. 
Yeah. So, Wilco, have you got your pint of Guinness ready? I'll, I'll just call for a can bear with me. Uh, see, he got his phone out, and I thought he had the first version of the iPhone to come out where he's just going to pretend to drink a pint, like, you know, that app that everybody used to have. Oh, the little Carlin app. Yeah. Didn't even know it was Carlin, to be fair. We need to have a word with them about their branding. Oh, going, back to, going back to the Hayworth Arms, this is showing my age, but on a Thursday night, it, Tenants Pilsner used to be a pound, but you could also get Carlsberg for, I think it was one twenty-five or one thirty. if you showed the Carlsberg app and you drank a pint in front of the, a virtual pint in front of the bar. <laughs> You can have a pint for like one pound twenty, one pound thirty. That was very cutting edge at the time, to be fair. Like to be yeah. chasing after apps and what that. Yeah, I mean, especially like if you think about how long ago I went to uni. Like, I was going to say, were you paying in pounds, pence, and shillings, or are these, uh, you know, halfpennies? Decimalisations killed the planet, mate. <laughs> so is the steam engine and the wheel. <laughs> Well, that's, that explains why I picked the beer this week, doesn't it? <laughs> well, oh, love it. I'll tell you what, though, to be fair, you went, we went to uni in Hull, where the wheel was only recently invented, and they still don't have proper <laughs> internet, so... Yeah, it's a, a glorious but strange place. Right then. So, are we all going to drink on... No, we can't all drink on three, can we? Who wants to go first? I'll step up. I, I don't mind. Uh, go on, then, mate. Go on then. Um, right, so. Wilco, what we do is we commentate on the uh, on the drinking of the get the beers. So, James, do you want to commentate on me? So, ladies and gentlemen, I can't see anything at all. All I, <laughs> all I, can, all I can feel is Ben's about to pick up the glass. Oh, um, we'd like to just say that the internet connection has been absolutely shocking. So, if this even makes it to your ears, like, Thank you very much for listening. This is more niche than any of the uh, the second CDs of the Now. That's why I call music albums. Right, here we go. James, I'm putting it to my lips when I go quiet. Ready? So presumably he's put it to his lips. He's looking confused, a little bit angry. He's drinking, he's drinking his death. He's finished. Now, he's finished. He should have stopped by now. Oh, he's finished. He's finished. And now we wait for the answers. So I'm just going to upload this to the group um, that we're all in. I'll tell you what, I was quite happy with it, but I reckon I've overshot by maybe a millimetre or two. Um, it's, it's, it's a value, you know, it's a not a bad first try, but it's definitely not going to win. There's, there's, there's good competitors out there. It's a good field. So, you know, I try my best. <laughs> I'd just like to thank, you know, everybody who's helped me get here. You know, my mom, my dad. <laughs> not going to go into the American voice again, don't worry. Oh, I mean... It's a high bar to get to start with, guys. I'm, yeah. we're, talking, we're talking two mils out, I think. I'm happy with that, though, because, you know, the I, the I is the saviour. The G makes it look awful because the G goes higher than the I, so between the G and the harp, it's just unachievable. So, James, your, your camera's been frozen the whole time, so um, you'll have to commentate on yours whilst you drink it. Okay. <laughs> I'll move the mic closer as well. <laughs> and I'm done. Oh, right. Well, that was okay. Uh, I didn't even know you started. Uh, how are we, how are we, what are we saying? So, shout out to Alex Calder, 5 for 5. Shout out to Shrove Tide, Shrove Tide Football, 5 for 5. Oh, we um, need to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alex I Calder, always. brewer of Calder Barn Beer, sponsor of the show. So for a bit of context, me and Calder have been talking about 200 attempts of this lifetime. That number changes all the time, I have no idea. <laughs> I've overshot, I've won once, I've overshot every other time. Today is an actual first. No. I want to hear the, resp to hear the response from the boys when I post this in the group. Yeah, it needs to go on the group because your camera's frozen, so we're uh, I'm not sure. That's a disgrace, isn't it? I'm so, down the heart, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody, um, you obviously can't see, so I need to put this into words. Um, imagine if Wilco ordered the mackerel wearing the jacket 
holding the flowers of his <laughs> his relationship ending. Whilst, whilst Jose Gonzalez plays in the <laughs> and, he, and he shits himself because of the protein powder that he bought. Imagine all of those ha- things happening simultaneously whilst he still had Alpacin shampoo in his hair. That... Well, he, that is none of that is even close to as embarrassing as what James has just posted in the group. Well off the mark. The, the entire drinking from the top to. We're actually going to put this on the social medias to just. We've had so much practice of this. I mean, we're in episode five now. We're veterans, and we can't be turning total, out shite like that. The total drinking amount is about five centimeters, and I've missed by at least two centimeters there. See, do you guys think it's any any coincidence that the first time we can't see James's camera is the first time that he absolutely fucks it? I'm starting to think there's a conspiracy there. That I'm, that I'm match fixing. You are. <laughs> you're match fixing. I'm match fixing in this game. Tell you what, though, it didn't take much match fixing, fixing last week. I had I had the thirst starting that episode, and uh, well. It was nice to hear what I said at the end, having re-listened to it a few times because I couldn't remember. But sorry, Gemma Collins, I actually really enjoyed your programme. Don't tell my mates. (laughs) (laughs) Right, so I don't have a gym's glass. Right, so... so. (laughs) Right, I need a picture of that. Right, you need to send us a picture of that that you've made. That is awesome. For, oh, so, yeah, so this doesn't actually work very well. Um, so based on your photos... I put gaffer tape on the side of my Guinness glass. Um, no, sorry, I put blue tack on the side of my Guinness glass and made it, you know, signify the level that it needed to get to. Josh has gaffer taped the word Guinness to his glass. I mean, it looks like it's about to be shipped to somewhere, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've written Guinness too big, so I think if I say to the bottom of the G... I mean... What? Basically, sense. basically, whatever you do, you how win. many how many fingers is it for you on a glass? Um, three, three and a half. So if I say the bot, like the middle of the G, bottom of the G. Yeah, you. If you go to the little like sort of horizontal line. Oh, so this is the first the time I've actually ever played this game. So, Ooh, where, have is... you, where have you been, man? You need to come to Ireland more often. Or I've got an excuse lined up, so. Beginner's look. He puts the glass to his lips. He looks intensely at it, and he pulls it. Oh my god! It's a, it was a fast one. I'm not really sure where it's up to because the gaffer tape. Way off. He's uh, oh my god! Right, ladies and gentlemen, he's disgraced himself again. James, you're not out of the woods, mate, because you've had loads of practices and it's his first try. But beginner's look doesn't work for this one because Josh Wilkinson has come second in the Guinness game. I'm about a finger off. Um. So for scores wise, just to update everyone for anybody who can't count, Ben three, myself two, Wilco, and uh, uh, others. Others. I was going to say half, but I, yeah, we're going to go half. You know. I think half a point's half fair. Half a point's fair. I'm not that far off. If we're going to entice all these big breweries on James, we need to give them some sort of incentive, and half a point, I think, is a is a reasonable <laughs> thing to get the money. And what does half a point make? Prizes. There we go. Oh, I didn't know that. I was going to say a tweet. <laughs> Seems to be the criteria. I'll tell you what, having got Twitter back, right, I deleted Facebook because, um, you know, like, it's fashionable. But also, it's just seemed like a bit of a waste of time. Um, but Twitter is so angry. So much anger flying around, like, like the, the lockdown and whatnot. I can't. Just log on and feel annoyed. I've never been on it. Never, never ever? No. Oh, you need to get it and retweet some of our things. Yeah, 100%. Just for that purpose. That's literally yeah. the only reason I have it, so, yeah. Um, just before we finish the Guinness game, guys, I'm just going to say, um, before next week's episode, if anyone wants to send a video in to us, um, I'm going to put together a, a mixed case of some beers that I like for the best short video of a Guinness game attempt. So if you don't have a glass, then make your own. Oh. You don't have to necessarily be Guinness. Oh, I'm going to put together a mixed case of beers to send out to the best video. So, and every uh, entry will be put on the Instagram account. So 
that is definitely one to think about. Send him uh, whatever you like, as long as you're drinking a Guinness. And obviously, I'm going to judge it on um, how close you are, but also creativity. I understand not everyone has a Guinness class. Doesn't have to be Guinness. Just your interpretation of that, um, a mixed case with some beers, maybe a couple of glasses and stuff out to whoever we think's the best. So let us I- know. That is a brilliant idea. As you can tell, we uh, we've we discussed this at length, and uh, I definitely agree. just I definitely <laughs> haven't just had four beers in an hour. And gone, this seems like a good idea. Yeah, I was thinking about a beer giveaway, but then uh, you know you got to buy the beer and send it. So I'm interested to see how how we're going to do this. Oh. Um, and if you could if you could use a hashtag more cans pod and hashtag Guinness game, it's easier for us to find as well. But we'll yeah, put all the, we'll put all the details on our social media so you guys will, you guys can find it. Right, Josh, you weren't expecting this, but um, have you got any other business to discuss at the end of this podcast, having just drilled off your 8%? Uh, yes, I actually Ooh. have. Yes. Ooh. Tiny Rebel Jam Donut. Oh, pump up the jam? Yeah. Not worth the hype. Ooh. Whoa. I mean, can you, can you I... go into a bit of detail before we... Delete everything you've said off the show and re-record it. <laughs> I liked it. I'm not saying it's a bad beer, but it's not as good as I was expecting. With every, with all that you see posted about it, and obviously they're quite good at branding it, and obviously they're only going to show share what people think about it. But could you give us a right. rate? Go on, give us a rating out of ten. What would you rate? Pump up the jam out of ten. Five or a six. Oh, I'm I'm with Walker. It's my least favorite of their core beers. Yeah, I see. I had the I had I the shake what, down the day before, great and beer. I really liked that. The what's the, what's the um, the lazy? Oh, what's it called? Easy living. Easy yeah. living. I like that. I think that's good beer. Peaches and cream. I think has enough tartness to be not as sweet as the jam, uh, the pump up the jam. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll tell you what I did like. It's just the novelty of like having a sip and somebody saying it's exactly like a jam donut and you're like, it fucking isn't. And then you have a sip. Fucking is. And it's it's still beer. It's still beer, which I I think is good. And I think it's fantastic what they're able to actually do. The fact that you are able to say, yeah, I can get that. That is a jam donut. But Beakley, I'm not having having 10 pints of it. It just, I could only have one can. I mean, yeah. for, those, for those who follow us on Twitter and Insta, especially Twitter, um, I think we do need to send a can of Pump Up The Jam for final appraisal to Martin Blunt. That is, that <laughs> is oh, my God. Well, oh, my God. For- yeah, I've got one in. So, you know what? I'm going to take him for Father's Day. I'll, I'll, that is a great idea. I'm going to take him a load of beers for him to review. And we're going to forward these. And for those who don't follow us on the social medias, he said that, um, I mean, Club Tropica was where this our tiny rebel adventure all started. Um, and he said that Club Trop sounded like, no, it tasted like, get the sense right. Um, it was something like when they round up all the beers at the afters and then pour everything into one glass and you have a sip. And I don't really know how he knows that. <laughs> You know exactly how he knows. Come on. <laughs> it just doesn't taste like it's got fag butts in it, and you it know, was. yeah. Um, I thought it tasted like alcoholic Rubicon. He thought it tasted like fag butt sort of um, punch from outside. But uh, yeah, no, we'll, we will do that actually, James. That's a great idea. Dad reviews. I've got a lot of time for, so we'll carry on the dad reviews. Uh, James, you got any other business for us? Um, not really. Um, I was just gonna reiterate before about um, if you want to get involved with the charity walk we're doing, we're going to launch at Wilco's it's good that Wilco's here because Wilco's joining us, Ben's joining yeah, yeah. us there's eight of us doing it at the moment if you want to get involved, please just drop us a drop us a line I'm just going to remind everyone of our email which is um, morecams8wise at gmail.com and also um, watch out for some stuff on YouTube over the next couple of weeks we're going to try and do so, stuff and see what works. if you think that it sounds disorganized when we're recording, two things. One, you're right. And two, it's not as disorganized as you're going to see in the videos because the videos do not discriminate because we don't know how to edit the videos. <laughs> the videos are going to go on in full on the YouTube 
um, for you all to see. Um, a, a bit of behind the scenes, isn't it, really? Um, yeah, you can see the behind the scenes. I, If I'd have known that they were going to go on YouTube, might have cho- chosen my outfits a bit differently. But, you know, we live oh, and we the, learn. Uh, for those uh, uh, who can't see it today, Benny's rocking the, the fetching powder blue vest top today. Well, can you see my sunburn line? And, and the Lego Man haircut. The Lego Man haircut is actually... This is a throwback to when I actually used to sport this haircut on purpose. And Very 2010. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's good to get likened to the likes of Velma from Scooby-Doo, Michael McIntyre and a Lego Man. Shows you versatility that the haircut has. I, um, I, sh- I, sh- I shared a picture of 2010 uni lacrosse this week. Um, yeah, some, there is some hair in that picture, isn't there? My it's God. exactly like that. Well, so the indie, the indie sweep when you used to the, wear your the, top man chinos to go to well, an indie club, yeah. The welly sweep, polo the, shirt, the welly, the welly uh, sweep, polo the shirt sweep. with the collar up because that meant that you were sound, and if you had it down, that meant you weren't sound. That was me. For, me for four years of my life, Converse, skinny black jeans, original penguin polo shirt buttoned up to the top. Yeah, thinking I was the greatest person in the world. <laughs> and you were right, James. Yeah, so yeah, somebody has to be wrong, don't they? So um, right. Well, fair enough. I think we've um, we've come to a natural conclusion. Those top three worst purchases were absolutely awesome. I really enjoyed all of them. Um, yeah, if you could just send us um, a bit of it, a bit of it. Who do you think was the most embarrassing? I'll put a poll out later on. But um, apart from that, uh, yeah. Yeah, and get you, get posting your Guinness game stuff. We'll put it all out. And oh, we're gonna put it all out. If you've even made it this far, we fucking love you. I've had the eight <laughs> <laughs> yeah, percent. Th- th- thanks for listening, guys. It really means a lot to us. Yeah, thank you very much. We're uh, we're still aiming for a thousand before we uh, thousand listens before we get the jackets, and uh, we're nearly a third of the way there. So. Perfect. We'll get them soon, embroidered, and we'll be on your high streets very soon, even if you aren't. And thank you very much, Wilco, for being on today. No, thanks for having me. Wilco, absolute legend. Your your purchases were far and away the best ones. (laughs) I didn't know if I should say one story, but it matters. The the mackerel, honestly, mate, it'll it'll live with you forever. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Thanks very much, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.